Hey everyone, it's Wildman, and guess what? Today we're diving into a pretty crazy series. We're diving into the deeply disturbing Vita Carnis. I know a lot of you have been waiting for this one, so I'm here to say that I finally came through. But for those of you who aren't familiar with the Vita Carnis series, it's this analog horror series with a focus around these creatures called the Vita Carnis. And what we are shown is a world filled with a new kind of horror that is sure to leave you hiding under your covers. Because there definitely are some episodes in here that make my skin crawl. Like this one about a mother and her son who finds themselves encountering a Vita Carnis. This series is extremely disturbing. But yeah, my name is Wellman. Please do not forget to subscribe as well as liking the video and commenting, bruh, as always. And yeah, without further ado, sit back, relax, and let's get into this very disturbing piece of analog horror. The first tape begins and immediately tells us that the following footage is classified, stating that unauthorized viewing of this footage is prohibited. The tape continues and tells us about the persistence of life in all kinds of conditions. Earth has owned these creatures since the dawn of life itself. But there is something changing, something that is changing the perspective on evolution. New life forms have appeared all around the globe and completely changing the balance of nature and what we know about evolution itself. The company National Living Meat Research is currently researching these new creatures that seemingly came out of nowhere, but they did originate on Earth. Now these life forms did arrive on Earth in 1931 and are made of muscles, organs, and bones, just like humans, but the only difference is that these creatures resemble mammals without skin or raw meat. They are called Vita Carnis. That is why we, at National Living Meat Research, have been studying these new species. They feast on the raw meat with the exception of their own species. We are then introduced to the first species of Vita Carnis, which is called a crawl. The crawl kind of resembling a large intestine, spreading out into cracks and corners like a vine. The crawl attaches itself to large surfaces like houses and rocks. The tape then goes on to detail the crawl's versatility, meaning that it can adapt anywhere. Using its root-like tendrils, it absorbs the material and processes it into usable energy. Although, the crawl also obtains energy through another means. But already we can assume that the other form of energy is by consuming human flesh. Then saying the inclusion of the crawl has also done wonders for the ecosystem, acting as a superfood for plants, which increases their growth, which means more food for animals. So nature is flourishing with the crawl now introduced into the ecosystem. But towards the end of the video, it gives us this really incredible detail that on occasion, a new life form will form on a crawl, a life form called the trimming. This node will fall off and grow into a functioning organism, and go to live on as an independent animal. Going on to the next tape, we are introduced to the trimming, which is a creature that we have covered in one of our previous episodes where I made kind of just a one-off video focusing on this specific episode. The tape tells us that the trimming varies in size, appearing to have the same structure but slight variation from creature to creature. However, one thing that they all share is that they are mostly made of meat tissue and are only about 8 inches long. Trimmings are also omnivores and mainly have a diet of fruits, veggies, roots, seeds, insects, and dead animals. However, given its frightening appearance, trimmings are scavengers and run away if you do approach them. This also does make them the bottom of the food chain in terms of all of the Vita Carnises. And pretty much the only reason why trimmings have not gone extinct is because of the abundance of crawl producing them. Trimmings grow at a decent pace, reaching maturity at around 7 months having a maximum lifespan of two to four years. But unlike the crawl, society hasn't really found a benefit to these creatures and are pretty much considered pests because of the overabundance of them. But regardless of all of this, some people do keep these as pets, which is just haunting, given that it does resemble a skinned turtle, even though it's not it's still creepy. 
The next creature we're introduced to is the Meat Snake, and this one is just very horrifying. A creature that emerges from the crawl, being born very small in size. However, this one does have the ability to grow up to 16 feet. When it first separates from the crawl, it is only a few centimeters in length. Eventually, it will reach an average length of 5 meters. Which just for reference, a ping pong table is roughly around 16 feet as well. So next to Michael Jordan, this is how big the meat snake would be. But then the tape gets very vague because it says under the conditions of war, plague, or natural disaster, the meat snake can grow much larger than this. The meat snake's diet consisting of animal carcasses, which is why war, plague, and natural disasters make the creature grow so large. It's eating the casualties from these horrific events. The meat snake senses its prey with its tongue, similar to regular snakes. However, perhaps the creepiest part of this creature is that when the meat snake consumes a carcass, it uses that skull as its own. And here we can see a meat snake using a human skull. During its lifespan, it will swap or replace these skulls if needed. The only significant ways a meat snake can die is through starvation, burning, or complete destruction of the meat snake's membrane coating. However, given the sheer size of meat snakes, this would prove very difficult. And what is even worse is that meat snakes are capable of mitosis, splitting themselves in two, forming another creature that will go on its separate way. But surprisingly, society in this world has found a use for meat snakes. They use these creatures as garbage bins for only meat, which also means they are used to clean up the bodies littered on battlefields. The only good thing about this entire thing is that meat snakes are not aggressive and only consume that of which is already dead. However, they will attack if they are provoked. It is an amazing experience to encounter one, as long as you don't mind the smell. In this next episode, we're introduced to the Mimics, which honestly are even creepier. Mimics are creatures that also originate from the crawl. It has uncanny similarities to that of humans and resemble a human with its skin removed. Aside from the exaggerated features such as its extremely long arms and claw-like fingers, they have extended fingers, longer limbs, bulging eyes, and most disturbing of all, they have a wide teeth filled smile. The video even saying that it looks like they're happy but they only appear that way coincidentally. But here comes the most shocking part of all, because the Mimic's teeth are shaped for optimal meat piercing. And unlike other Vita Carnuses, the Mimic's entire diet consists of human flesh. A mature Mimic's diet is comprised entirely of human flesh. The video then goes on to talk about the Mimic's life cycle, which consists of three stages. In the first stage, they separate from the crawl, as similar to all the other Vita Carnuses, and at first they do slightly resemble a trimming. So you might pick one of these up, thinking it's just a trimming, and then you raise it, and it becomes this human-like creature. Once large enough, it will begin metamorphosis into the next stage of life. In the next stage of its life, it begins to resemble a human, and this is where the Mimic begins to prey on people it can find. Its tactics involve moving to human populated areas, and then stalking their prey, hiding in plain sight. And what's even freakier about this creature is that it will try to blend in with other humans, by putting clothes on, hiding in mannequins and or furniture. And the mannequin part has to be the worst of all, and we will most likely see a Mimic hiding in one as the series continues. And once a mimic has found when its target will be most vulnerable, it will strike and then immediately begin feeding on its victim. This is typically when the human is asleep at night. Once the prey is within position, the mimic will advance silently until it is close enough. The mimic will then execute and immediately begin consumption. Then leaving the home after it's had its full, and retreat from the human population to begin digesting. However, in the case that a human is awake during this attack, the Mimic will use a variety of sounds to try and confuse the person until they are cornered, and that's when the Mimic will kill them. Once a human is in place, it will swiftly attack and kill the helpless target. <laughs> And what plays before us after the tape glitches out is someone trying to escape a mimic. The person locks themselves in what looks like a cupboard and hopes that the mimic leaves. But it's too late. The mimic creeping in and attacks the person recording. <sighs> the 
the tape then cuts back to the features of a mimic, and we're told if a mimic has a consistent supply of food, it will begin to resemble a human more and more every time it eats one. It will develop more human-like features. It will grow skin, hair, and by the end will look nearly identical to a human being. Up until the point where it is indistinguishable from another person. Although if a mimic has an abundance of food, like too much food, it'll grow into something called the Elder Mimic, its skin turning into tough armor that only hardens the more it consumes. And because of the dark hue of its body, it blends seamlessly into dark environments. The Elder Mimic is the most efficient predator on the planet, so much so that this creature poses a huge threat to humanity. There are even steps on how to defend against one, although they are pretty much just trying to escape with your life. All the steps essentially include either hiding from it or defending yourself as much as you can, because there is no possibility of winning this fight. Strikes or shots on a mimic is not effective enough to bring it down in time. Instead, use it as a barrier between you and the mimic to block any attacks. Hide somewhere low like under a bed or behind other furniture. The tape then comes to an end and we can hear the mimic chewing on the flesh of the person from earlier. Within Harvesters, we are informed that these creatures are large, bulbous masses, 9 feet in height, 6 feet in diameter. And just to put that into perspective, this is what it would look like next to someone 6 feet tall. But the biggest thing to take away from this Vita Carnis is that it has these tentacle-like extensions of itself called tendrils. They burrow their way under the ground and essentially act as bear traps. So if anything steps on this, it will be paralyzed and bled out. And then the harvester will absorb all of the blood and bring the body underground where it will be digested. The harvester thankfully isn't everywhere, however if you do happen to stumble upon one of these, it's recommended to stay as far away as possible because there is no cure for getting punctured by one of these tendrils. And if you step on one of these, death is guaranteed. The best thing you can do is avoid encountering a harvester in the first place. If you are hiking, Take note of any warnings or signs saying that there are harvesters around. But if you do find yourself in a harvester field, what you can try to do is throw a large object at the harvester. That way it will try to eat whatever you threw and hopefully give you enough time to escape. In this next one called the Host of Influence, the host is a semi-human looking organism, however that's as far as the relation goes. The lower half of the host is made of fiber tissue and tendrils that keep it in place, like the roots of a plant, and instead of skin, it's covered in this muscly tissue fiber, tendons, and veins. Its head is a smooth surface with a slit in the face used for feeding, and the hairs that it does have on the body are used to release spores, and what's creepy about the spores is that if you do inhale some of these, you will become infected. The first signs of infection are restlessness, sluggish movement, numbness, and lack of coordination. But over time, more serious symptoms will start to arise. You'll get dizziness, migraines, impaired speech, and trembles. And after six to seven hours after infection, you will begin to walk. Uh, as to where you may be asking, you will begin to walk to the host that released the spores that you inhaled. But the most horrifying part of all of this is that when you finally do reach the host that infected you, you bow down to the host and expose all of your eternal organs, to which the host will rip you open and begin feeding on you. They will kneel down in front of it, expose their vital organs, and the host will promptly gut and remove those organs. The host will consume them and discard the leftover scraps. Now it is unknown whether you are conscious during this entire time you were forced to walk to the host and then arms open and then get slid open for it to eat you, but most likely what is happening is that you can see everything that's going on, but your body is moving for you because of these spores. Your mind taking a back seat essentially, all you can do is watch as your body is being controlled. This one is definitely the most terrifying Vita Carnis, in my opinion. But there is hope when it comes to this one, because if you do fail to reach the host in 36 hours, the effects will wear off. You can also be treated for symptoms if you inhale spores, so there is still hope.
In this tape called Monoliths, we're introduced to perhaps the strangest Vena Carnis of this entire series, because there are only seven of them. The monolith is a titanic-sized being, measuring roughly 120 meters in height. The creature itself is made of hundreds of thousands of meaty strands, tightly woven together to form the structure. They are the newest of the bunch, only appearing first in 1972, all of them located in this circular position under a mile in diameter. But a very important piece of information is redacted from the tape. All of them located in a circular position, one and a half kilometers in diameter. This ring of monoliths surround- The monoliths are surrounding something but it doesn't tell us what. But what is strange is that they don't do anything, they just stand there. The only thing noted that they did do is redacted from this tape as well. The only activity documented that the monoliths have done was in- Which is odd considering this is already a classified tape, so whatever they are hiding has to be extremely sensitive information that can never get out. All we do get is, during this period, they were extremely aggressive when the group of blank, were making their way to the city. The monolith swung its appendages at the team, completely wiping them out. Military vehicles were dispatched once they got close enough to it. It roared another call, this time releasing an EMP blast, completely knocking the vehicles out in the vicinity. Finally, long-distance rockets were fired and struck the creature, but it quickly regenerated. The site where the monoliths stand has been closed off and people still have no idea what they are here for. In the last segment of the video, we are shown that there is one more Vita Carnis. However, the tape glitches out and we are never told what it is. And this is the point in the series where things are really going to start getting very haunting, as we're going to be diving into some real world sightings of these creatures. So that's why I'm here. And by the looks of weathering, it had been in there for quite some time. This could be the greatest discovery of the age. Have any information of the whereabouts of This tape begins with someone flicking through TV channels, and on one of those channels, we can see a wanted person named Vincent Barrer, wanted by the CSIS. Have any information of the whereabouts of Has recently gained a fair amount of popularity. Today's dish will be a cheesy crawl penne. When we make it to this cooking channel, it seems pretty innocent enough, but then we are told that this recipe includes crawl, which are the plant-like vita carnises all the other ones grow from, and we're also shown that it's pretty common for people to grow and harvest these as well. Crucial ingredient. New Dryer Company's newly released flavor enhancer. Also, this flavor enhancer we're going to be coming back to later in this video. The cooking tutorial starts, and we can see the person cutting the crawl, a grease like substance coming out of it. The crawl then goes into the skillet, and it honestly looks kind of like pastrami, I think. The rest of the video just goes through the recipe as normal. However, there is this really weird feeling throughout the entire video. This amount of cheese along the still warm crawl for it to melt. The tape then finishes, but at the end of the video, we are shown this image, a drawing of a person that looks like they've been captured by two creatures. Although the other critters ignored the rest of their fellow kind, instead, they secretly visited the slumbering visitor. They snuck what little food they had and carefully fed it to the prince, greatly hastening their recovery. And honestly, I'm not too sure the significance of these drawings, but I'm going to be including them anyway. In the pet trimming tape, we start to learn that people have begun adopting trimmings as pets. The tape begins by telling us about the wonders of a pet, saying they can become so close to you that they can even be considered part of the family, which is crazy. The trimmings enjoy warmer temperatures and should nest in boxes. The trimmings can also eat anything, although it's recommended to give them dog food. So all of this seems pretty innocent and a little bit cute, uh, but then we're introduced to the fact that these trimmings are nocturnal, and the screams that they make throughout the entire night are just very haunting. Thing to remember is trimmings are nocturnal and make plenty of noise. Ah! 
as if the creature is screaming in agony as it cries throughout the entire night. Either that or it may be trying to call other trimmings to its aid, or potentially even calling another type of Vita Carnis, potentially even a mimic. The video returning to normal, continuing this baseline advice of taking care of a pet trimming, making sure that it gets plenty of sunlight, and making sure that it has enough space in the home to roam around. Socialization is another interesting fact that these things need. The rest of the video maintaining the theme of taking care of your pet, concluding the video by stating that you should ensure to give your trimming plenty of attention. They love seeing and listening to all the funny things coming from the devices. But as the video concludes, the video presents us with this false illusion that this is a happy pet, when this creature should really not be around humans. Which also makes me think about the point that I raised earlier that because mimics and trimmings look similar when they are young, it does make me wonder if anyone has accidentally raised a mimic and then was killed by it when it finally grew up. You are now well equipped to have a trimming become a part of the family. This next tape in the series is focused on the meat snake. Within it, it details us about how when World War I ended, the cleanup process had started. However, during a cleanup of an underground tunnel, there was a meat snake stuck in the tunnel. But on closer inspection, the creature was still alive. There lay a meat snake larger than anyone had ever seen, because on average, these creatures should only be around 16 feet long. But this one had greatly exceeded that height. And when they checked the back end of this creature, they found found hundreds of corpses that it had consumed, which is why the creature grew to be so large. When the creature was found, it was lacking movement, so they also assumed that it was dead. But when the creature was more closely examined, they found that it was alive, and that its skin had become tough like armor, something not even typical of meat snakes to do. Another strange occurrence is that the smell of the skin smelled like scrambled eggs and cookies. And what I think was happening is that after consuming so many soldiers, it adapted adapted into luring fatigued soldiers in with the smell of breakfast. But after investigating this meat snake the next day, the meat snake seemingly just vanished from the tunnel, gone without a trace. But the specimen displayed a rather pleasant smell, like that of cooking scrambled eggs. Meat snake was later discovered to be missing by unknown sir. One of the critters built up the courage to meet the now awake stranger. They crawled to the prince's side and extended their hand in friendship. The prince reached back, and together they had formed the bond that will change their fate. This next one is called Mimic Defense Instructional Tape. In this tape, we are introduced to the global threat of missing persons and fatalities that mimics are causing. So in this tape, it's teaching you how to defend against one, which as we learned before is pretty much impossible. We can see a few locations that mimics are able to squeeze inside by contorting their bodies. However, they can also extend their bodies to appear more intimidating. And we're also shown what mimics look like when they are posing as human giving this very uncanny valley appearance. But what is weird is that in this tape, it tells us that you can fight against a mimic, opposed to what we were told in that classified tape that there is no point in fighting back. But given that this version was aired to the public, it would make sense to tell the public that there is a chance of survival if they do fight back. Because if you tell people that, you know, they're not going to survive an attack like this, people are going to begin freaking out. Do not leave the area. Officials will need to locate you to help. Stay low and stay quiet. Let's see. Yep, it's working. After the tape cuts out, we are shown this found footage of someone recording their experience with a mimic encounter, Janice and Chris, who seem to be taking a stroll during the middle of the night. Are you sure we should be out this late? Fine. I'll cook you stuff when we get home. Don't worry. I'm hungry. The two eventually make it to the woods, Chris telling Janice that the reason they're going here is that Chris is going to be buying a trailer, I think. However, as they get closer to the trailer park, Janice gets even more worried. They eventually find an abandoned car, and Janice wants to leave already. But Chris doesn't seem bothered at all that they're walking through the woods at night. Like, we, we could get a shot of this in, like, atmosphere, you know? 
It just looks like tetanus to me. Uh, hopefully. Eventually, the two stop walking and a confidential warning appears on screen. Back there was the perfect time for a serial killer to jump out and grab us, you know? Cut it out! It's scary enough as is. Chris? 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 Janice then loses Chris and begins to make her way back, thinking that Chris is just messing around. However, on her way back, Janice comes face to face with a mimic and attempts to escape. Chris, however, wasn't as lucky. Chris? What are you doing? Chris, this isn't funny. But when Janice does make it home, the mimic follows her back, and it makes its way inside the home and kills her. Within Species Anomaly Report, it states the following. Carnist Species Log Number 14, Abnormally Documentation Harvester. And on August 1st, we can see that the population of harvesters mainly inhabits the west and east coast. Immediately after, the tape shows us a family of four, all with uncanny valley faces. Then we're shown two children from the photo hanging out in the woods. The footage is very distorted, but we can see what I'm assuming is a harvester's tendrils. And what plays before us is just very horrifying because what ends up happening is that this family was on a wilderness hike, but the youngest kid went ahead of the family to explore and ended up stumbling upon a wild harvester. And if you guys recall, the harvester is the Vita Carnis shaped like an egg with tendrils surrounding it that act as bear traps to capture their prey. And unfortunately, this kid stepped on a harvester's trap. And his screams are truly horrifying, so timestamp here in case you do want to skip it. But if this couldn't get any worse, the mother tries to save her child, but ends up getting trapped and killed by the harvester as well. Another timestamp in case you want to skip the screams. And this episode has to be the most haunting one in the entire series. The screams of the kid's mother filled with anguish and then pain, as well as the child's screams, it's just, it's just very terrifying. And I think this top comment on the video really says it all. The idea of a child crying in pain as its flesh being slowly ripped away by an uncaring, natural horror is truly both terrifying and an effective parody of nature. This is the first video of the series that actually brought shivers down my spine. The image at the end reading, with the power he shall hear their home, the rest of the text is illegible. Now going into this next one, it's called Flavor Enhancer. And remember I did say there was something off with this Flavor Enhancer we saw earlier. So in this one, it really dives into what this actually is. We at New Trier Co. have made it so that you may enjoy every single bite you take. The company called New Trier Co. established in 1990 brings to you the world of Flavor Enhancer, a type of spice that is supposed to bring out all of the flavors of your favorite dish. And what they're bringing to the market now is the Flavor Enhancer Deluxe. The tape is pretty much just a commercial for this Flavor Enhancer, but there are some off points to this tape, like when the tape glitches out in these two occasions. Savor. Especially in this instance where it shows two very strange looking chicken tenders and then screams start to play. Well your kids with this essential part of every meal. New trier for and I don't know what it is about these chicken tenders, but these look like something other than chicken. They're probably crawl or fingers. 
the tape saying something really weird. It says that the flavor enhancer is essential to daily eating and to add it to any food, including even just a slice of bread. Flavor enhancer deluxe. Required for all meals. Then showing this very weird ending with chanting and people's hands reaching for the flavor enhancer. The image at the end says, the prince gathered what he could and then set a sail onward. Once the prince returns home, they will come back to the island and return to the critters. Now as we are getting closer to the end of this series, there are only two episodes left. In this tape, we are briefed on classified information in regards to the flavor enhancer. Nutri Scandal Co. is facing charges after numerous reports of sickness after consumption of their product. Only statements made from the company so far are dismissing any issues and that their product is safe to consume. We are then shown numerous government officials with pins with a triangle on them, indicating that they are in on this entire conspiracy. Then we are shown the ant from earlier, who has been taken over by a cordycep. Cordyceps being invasive mushrooms that can take control over ants, which is a very real thing. They recently became popular in mainstream because of the HBO Last of Us adaptation, but these cordyceps, also known as zombie ant fungus, infects insects such as ants or spiders. Like other parasites, cordyceps drains its host completely of nutrients before filling its body with spores that will let the fungus reproduce. And what I think that this means is that the flavor enhancer is filled with these spores, which is why these people got sick. Karka's Conflicts with Nation The private organization of Contaminants and Research Consult Association Society has been experiencing backlash from government agencies about cooperation and violation of newly introduced policies of, and then it cuts out. The tape ending with this message to Carcass, and that's where this next tape picks up. In the distant horizon, the group of monoliths stand vacant. Although closed off to outsiders, their stance can be observed well outside the perimeter. In the last episode titled Message, we are shown the monoliths once again, a video documenting what is known about this Vita Carnis. But then the message from earlier continues. Within it, we receive a message from an unknown person, this message being directed to Carcass, the organization that received backlash for investigating the flavor enhancer. The person reaching out tells Carcass that he too has been investigating this flavor enhancer and all of these cases that have been covered up. These cases including the son and mother being killed, the largest meat snake to ever exist, and Chris and Janice, the two siblings that were attacked and killed by a mimic. All of these cases are seemingly just being buried and this organization with the people with triangles are the ones behind it. And the person making this message has documents of all of these cover-ups and that they all lead here. Then we are shown the last remaining Vita Carnis, the one that was redacted from the original files. And finally, the last creature on this list is... A Vita Carnis called Viram, comprised of a dark of luminous colors, is estimated to orb has several. Not well understood, the singularity typically can be found suspended. The messenger then saying that he knows where this organization is meeting next, and puts it on the organization of Carcass to put an end to all of this. So essentially it seems to be this underground organization that is covering up all of these cases of people that are being killed by Vita Carnis. They also seem to be synthesizing this formula that has spores inside of it and marketing it as a flavor enhancer. So there does seem to be two threats happening. The threat of this underground organization and then there are also the Vita Carnis as well which are an uncontrollable natural force. And as for the monoliths, we still don't know their true purpose other than the fact that they moved once and wiped out an entire group, never to move again after that.
But yeah, I really love this series. I'm glad I covered it. Um, I can't wait to see what happens next. Also, I do want to take this time to say thank you to all of you. The channel has received a lot of support recently. Still pretty crazy. We hit 100k not too long ago. So thank you for staying tuned. You are awesome. And uh, yeah, that's everything. Thank you for spending some time with me. It's always super great. And uh, yeah, I'll see you later in the next one. I love ya. Bye. In open wide, the video starts off with an image of a woman staring directly at the viewer. And before long, her mouth begins to open, revealing an empty void inside. 